Well, for black families traveling through the segregation era South, a warm welcome into a business wasn't a guarantee. Yeah, a special travel guide called a green book could help avoid racist and even dangerous encounters with directing African Americans to friendly locations instead. And now a college professor in Elizabeth City is rediscovering not only those locations, but others that didn't make it in. News 3 reporter Anthony Sabella takes us beyond the Green Book. It was just a beautiful neighborhood, a beautiful neighborhood. Yeah. At 89 years old, I'll be 90 in May. Joyce Long still remembers a lot about her childhood in Elizabeth City, growing up in the segregated South. Yes, I was born and raised here right on Harrington Road. It was called Euclid Avenue at that time. At least personally, Long recalls a friendly neighborhood. Very close. But for visiting black families, there was no way of knowing. Stopping at the wrong place could be the difference between coming home safe after a trip or not coming home at all. And so the Green Book became a lifeline. Created by a gentleman named Victor H. Green, a guide to African-American businesses or businesses that welcomed African-Americans. The inspiration for the Best Picture Oscar winning film from 2018. And according to North Carolina records of Green Book locations, Elizabeth City had just two. To Dr. Melissa Stuckey, Where I know that there are more unacceptable. For the past year, this assistant professor of history at Elizabeth City State University has been digging deeper. On this particular corner was a lunchroom. You would stop at those first two places, but it opened up an entire world of Elizabeth City to the traveler who came here. Her project, Beyond the Green Book, is rediscovering that world. For two semesters, Stuckey and her students have combed through old city directories, maps, and African-American newspapers to piece together black life in 1942. The historic road Street, Shepherd Street neighborhood. This is a historic African American neighborhood that began its growth after the Civil War. Almost a full year into it, they've taken these two Green Book locations and added 73 other black owned businesses in and around the neighborhood. We're talking grocery stores, restaurants, barber shops, and a funeral home we checked out for ourselves. This was the John T. Davis funeral home managed all of the funerals and other final arrangements for people in the neighborhood. Now a vacant building, the porch overgrown with weeds, but still beautiful. And each day, countless unknowing cars drive by on Road Street. This and the historic location right next door. A dentist in the neighborhood, his name was Fred C. Cook. Uh, his wife was actually a pianist and taught the kids in the neighborhood piano. Both spots discovered by her fall semester students who gave final presentations in December. He came from a big family. His father was Samuel P. Cook. Further down Road Street, one of the listed Green Book businesses. In the 1940s, it was owned by a man named Luther Overton, and it was called Overton's Garage. Which brings us back to Ms. Long. The Overton uh, business. The Overton name, one she's known for a long time. It was a family business. An ECSU alum herself, when Long found out about Stuckey's project, she says she had to get in contact thrilled to find people so young who cared about rediscovering her old neighborhood. She told me what she was doing. I said, thank goodness, thank goodness. I will help you in any way that I can. As more folks know about the work, I get a chance to talk to senior citizens who have very vivid and powerful memories. Resources invaluable to this work. Stucky in return, sharing what she's uncovered. Oh my goodness. Folks in the neighborhood want their stories told, to have conversations, to do interviews, and to really get the story together before it's too late to be able to tell it with living memory. In Elizabeth City, Anthony Sabella, News 3. What an incredible treasure right here in our own backyard and with a new batch of spring students. Stucky says she wants to expand the scope of her project and digitize those historic materials. Eventually, she wants to create a research center on ECSU's campus devoted to the study of African-American education and life in primarily African-American neighborhoods.